Well, today we are going to create a teapot for the dollhouse that will fit a Valentine's theme. Stay tuned and see how fun and easy this project is. All right, we're gonna make our teapot this time out of a nice red clay. And this happens to be a combination of equal parts Sculpey 3 in Red Hot Red and Sculpey 3 in um, Red Pearl. I liked the color of the Red Pearl, but I didn't want it to be that, the pearly look to it. And the Red Hot Red was just a little too orange, so I've got a nice happy medium here. So I'm going to take a small amount, and I have my drill gauge. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the 5 16 inch hole. Now you could just take your little ball of clay, smush it with your finger, and that would be fine. What I'm doing is I'm putting it into that hole, I'm pressing it down, lifting off, use my clay blade and pick it up. And now I have a disc that has completely straight sides. So I'm going to put this on my baking pl plate. I'm going to bake this by itself for about 10 minutes just to get this solid so that when I add the next step to my teapot, it doesn't distort the size and shape of this. So I'll be right back when this is baked and cooled. All right, this is baked and cooled, so now it's nice and firm, and I don't have to worry about messing it up. So I've got some more of my clay, and I've rolled this into a nice, neat ball that's about a half inch in diameter. I have my liquid clay. And I'm not going to need much. I'm only going to need just a tiny bit. There's almost always some up on the top of the, the bottle. So I'm going to take my toothpick, <clears throat> get just the tiniest amount, and I'm going to put onto here. Because we don't want so much that it runs out, but we do need a little bit because we're attaching raw clay to baked clay. Center this on. Get it where you want it. And there we go. All right. So now this is going to get baked again for 10 minutes. Now, I've got just a tiniest bit of white showing here. I don't think that's enough that it will cause an issue. If you've got very much, take that base off, wipe it off, and try again. Worst case scenario though, let's say you end up with a big glob of liquid clay showing once it's baked. Don't worry, you can always paint this with red paint over the clay when it's all done. But I'm going to take this to the oven, I'm going to bake it for this time 20 minutes actually because this is a thicker ball of clay. Once it's baked and cooled, I'll come back and we'll start adding some shape to this. So I'll be right back. All right, this is baked and cold. We can see a little white line there. We'll see at the end how I feel about that. So now we are going to add a shaped top. And um, I'm going to start by kind of making a ball. Find my toothpick and a little bit of this again. Now I need to be sure that I am on the very top. So I'm holding this nice and straight. Put the dot right there. A little bit bigger ball. And I'm not measuring this ball, I'm just kind of going by feel by what I think I want. And then I'm going to pull it down. And this one you're going to have to work with for a while. This is this is where we're really going to know be grateful that we have pre-baked all our steps up to this one. Because there's no way, if this wasn't put together with the, and baked, that I could do what I'm doing now. It would misshape everything we already did. Pull this down so it's nice and smooth. And that clay is soft enough. Because it's Sculpey 3, it is a pretty soft clay. And we're going to make kind of a, a peak. And then I want to make kind of a shape in between. I want to take my knife, which is right here, and cut off just the very top. I want a flat, a flat top. And 
our lid is going to sit on top of this piece. That's why it has to be flat. But pull down until you get rid of any marks where the two clays are coming together. And we can kind of disguise. If it's just minor, we can disguise it with our dots. I'm kind of shaping this and making it just what I want. Then I'm going to use my tile to flatten that top a little more. Now I've got this shape. So now I'm going to bake this again for 10 minutes so that I don't mess up that shape. When it's baked and cooled, I'll be back and we'll go to the next step. All right, here is our little teapot. It's all baked and cooled, so we have our basic shape. Now I'm going to add a lid to the top. For that, I'm making a small ball. And I'm going to put just a tiny bit of liquid clay on the top. Just a bit. You don't need much, just enough to kind of help this to stay together. And now I've got this ball. I'm going to flatten it on my table, on my tile. And I'm going to put it on carefully. Now you can make your lid any shape you want. You can make it more or less rounded. Now, I'm going to take a little tiny ball of clay. And this, I might have to finish this off camera because this is going to be kind of hard to do where you, the camera can see it. But I'm going to place this right on the top. There we go. I think that's right. I'll double check off camera. But now this needs to bake again for another 10 minutes and cool back to room temperature and then I'll be back. All right, that little connection spot proved to be too small of a spot, so I did end up having to add just a tiny drop of liquid clay to hold on that little knob. I have a little ball of clay here. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. Just a small ball. And I'm going to make a little teardrop. And then I'm going to cut the end kind of flat. Now let's get a little drop of clay, of liquid clay. I'm going to take the rounded end down and I'm going to press this on. And this can be blended in as much or as little as you like. I've seen some teapots in real life that have it looks like an added piece and some it looks like it's the same piece. Now it, it was pointed out to me that there was no way for the tea water for the water to come out of the teapot on last month's teapot. So we'll poke a hole in it with a very tiny dotting tool. If you don't have a little dotting tool, you could use a toothpick. Alright, when you have this the way you want it, bake this for another 10 minutes, and once it's cooled, we'll add the handle. So I'll be right back. All right, this is baked and cooled, so let's put a handle on it now. So for that, we're going to make a skinny snake, and make the snake for this longer than you expect your handle to be. Because we want to cut it off at the right spot, not have it, um, not come up short. So I'm going to make a nice skinny snake, and you want it pretty thin. I would guess probably about a sixteenth of an inch in diameter, which is about the same thickness as a uh, toothpick. And you see I'm doing a very long snake here. Now, I get a little bit of this, and I'm going to be very careful to go across from my spout. And where you anchor this is up to you. That's a design choice. Um, double check. Yep, yeah, I'm happy with that. Take your snake and point it this direction. You want it to go up. 
it looks like I'm going to have to coat this with a little bit of red paint, but that's okay. It's only going to take one coat of red to cover up the little bits of um, liquid clay that are showing. And if I would have made tinted liquid clay, I wouldn't have had to do that, but I wasn't sure how much I was going to need. Now also, what shape you make your handle on your teapot is up to you because that's another place where different teapots have different, I guess you'd say, personalities. Smush it in, work it in as best you want, however you want it to look. Make sure the handle is running straight up and down. And now this needs to bake at the recommended temperature for one final time for another 10 minutes. Once this is baked and cooled, we'll come back and it looks like we're gonna put a thin coat of red paint on before we add our decorative paint. So I'll be right back. All right, this is all baked and cooled and I brought you down a little closer. So we are going to give this a light coat of just some apple barrel in flag red. Since I was not as neat with the liquid clay as I could have been, <coughs> excuse me, but that's fine. This way we've got a good color underneath and this should only take one coat um, and it's similar to what I've got. So I'm going to give this a nice coat of paint. Um, once this dries, I'll come back and we'll go on to the next step. All right, our red paint is dry, so we have a nice even red coat. Now, the next step technically is optional, but I highly, highly, highly recommend it. And that is to give a coat, uh, a very light coat very thin coat of a matte Mod Podge or something similar to the entire teapot. We're going to paint a satin finish on when we're done. But this will give us, this is kind of our insurance coat. What will happen is this will seal this red paint because our next, and this is regardless if you had to paint or if you're working directly on your clay. Our next step will be to add some white dots. If we accidentally put a white dot where we don't like it, or it doesn't turn out the way we want it, if we've sealed this with a matte Mod Podge or something similar, we'll be able to just wipe it right off. But if we put it on either the paint directly without sealing the paint or the clay that is not sealed, it's going to soak in and it's going to be pretty much impossible to correct those mistakes without coating it with another coat of red paint. So that's why I'm giving this a clear coat now. So I'm going to let this dry and then I'll be back and we can go on to that decorative step. All right, now that that Mod Podge has dried, we can start painting some dots. And I saw a couple of different teapots online that this is kind of patterned after. Um, but not, not after any one specific. I've got my dotting tool, I've got white craft paint. So I'm going to and then I'm going to try another one. I'm going to do a slightly smaller dot. And I'm going to continue that. I'm not going to put any on the lid, the spout, or the handle. I'm just going to put it on the main body of the teapot. And I've got a couple of different size dotting tools here so that I can make different sizes in different places. So I am going to finish this off. I'm going to do one side, let it dry and then turn it around and do the other side. And when these are all dry, I'll come back and we will put a clear finish on. So I'll be right back. All right, I have dots all the way around on all the places that I want them. So now it's time to use some Mod Podge. I've got some satin Mod Podge off here to the side. And I'm going to just put a thin, even coat, in fact, that that dip that I just did is probably plenty for the entire teapot. 
and I think I say this every time I put Mod Podge on anything, when using Mod Podge, use very thin, even coats. And if you need more, put a second coat on once that dries. Mod Podge has a very nasty habit of staying sticky if it's put on too thick, in my experience. So I am going to make sure this is all evened out. I'm going to let it dry, and then we can get a look at our finished teapot. Be right back. All right, here's our finished teapot. I love how this came out. It's quirky, it's cute. It will be adorable in the dollhouse. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, hit the like button. Leave me a comment. What kinds of things would you like to see in future tutorials? If you enjoy my content and haven't subscribed, I encourage you hit that subscription button and the notification bell so you know when I put up a new video. Thank you very much for watching today and I will talk to you next time. Bye.